Yakai, uh, my name is Marcia Langton and uh, our team at the Indigenous Data Network uh, will be presenting today on improving Indigenous research capabilities and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander research data commons. We have a partnership with the ARDC and NCRIS. Uh, with me today, uh, Dr. Kristen Smith, Dr. Vanessa Russ, and Professor Aaron Korn. The Indigenous Data Network acknowledges the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander traditional custodians of the lands on which we work and live. We pay respects to their elders past and present and the place of Indigenous knowledge in the academy and beyond. We acknowledge and respect that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have always used resources from the land and waters for nourishment, medicine and healing. Let me begin now by giving you an overview of our project, Improving Indigenous Research Capabilities. So we propose to work across three streams of activities and address the socio-technical infrastructures of Indigenous data and its governance by building and strengthening Indigenous research partnerships across the nation, developing capability training in local community data stewardship, developing pathways for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people into data research and data science, and developing cross-sectoral applications of Indigenous data governance principles. During this project, we will support four communities of Indigenous research data custodians. The first category, are the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities and organisations that will participate. Second, universities, researchers and other research bodies, including NGOs. Third, the GLAM sector or uh, libraries, archives and museums. And fourth, Commonwealth state, territory and local government entities. Here's a list of our project team and partners. So I'll hand over to Dr. Kristen Smith. So we have a, a series of people listed here across different institutions, including the University of Melbourne, um, the Australian National University and the University of New South Wales, um, as well as CSIRO. So the hub of this project will be at the University of Melbourne. But the institutions where pro the project team are located are ANU, UNSW, IATSIS, Empower Communities, CSIRO, Geoscience Australia, the ABS and the AIHW. So improving Indigenous research capability pro project aims include to facilitate a collective agreement on an application of a set of uniquely Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander data governance principles to enable Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander organisations and researchers to manage their data sustainably, to establish the breadth and depth of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander research data available across Australia that are relevant to the needs of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, to develop the foundation of an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander data commons and to add value to Indigenous research data collections by facilitating access to appropriate aggregation and analysis tools. The project framework embeds Indigenous data governance and sovereignty across all streams of activity uh, across the AIDC HASS project. Uh, so the breakdown of this project includes uh, improving re Indigenous research capabilities project includes uh, three streams, the social architecture, technical architecture, national data asset. So for the first stream of social architecture, we'll be focusing on looking at Indigenous data governance and sovereignty. So the activities in this stream are designed to bring together Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander national Indigenous data governance leaders and stakeholders to collectively review, refine and agree upon 
a set of core and uniquely Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander data governance principles. And these principles will inform and be applied to all other streams and activities on this project. So the first activity that we will be undertaking for this project will be a national scoping and engagement of Indigenous research communities and examining place -based, the place-based application of Indigenous data governance principles. The second activity will be a round table of national leaders and key stakeholders of Indigenous data governance and sovereignty who will come together and agree on a, an overarching ID Indigenous data governance principles that can be applied across the rest of the project. The third activity in this stream will be a series of place-based case studies applying the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander data governance principles. Two, the technical architecture, building the foundations for an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander research data commons. The activities in stream two will work to establish the foundations of an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander research data commons, exploring repository services to ensure the preser preservation of data assets, catalog services to make them discoverable and metadata generation to improve asset description and facilitate data linkage and aggregation. Activity 2.1 is the Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander research data engagement and scoping component. Activity 2.2 is the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Research Data Catalogue. And Activity 2.3 is the Research Data Capability Building for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Organisations and Researchers. So for Stream 3, we'll be looking at building an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander spatio-temporal framework. So the the Stream 3 aims to build the foundations for a set of the core national Indigenous data assets, focusing on the development of an Indigenous loci framework, which parallels the ABS hierarchy and can be applied to any data, which includes location information. So the first activity for this stream of work will be vocabulary development and metadata labelling, with a focus on traditional knowledge and biocultural metadata labels. The second activity, activity 3.2, will be building the foundations of a geospatial portal. Activity 3.3 will be working on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander data rematriation and archival services. Improving Indigenous research capability projects use cases includes policy ready data, so national data asset case study. A case study will select a be selected according to its potential for broad benefit to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities nationally with the regard to its significance in scope and purpose. Examples may include a theosaurus and or ontology extensions, catalog content and interoperability extensions to support reuse for other data assets and other contexts common service extensions to support the use um, of the new national data assets and future similar data assets in ways useful to Indigenous communities and D, to mobilise data and put it to use for advocacy and for policy development. And um, <clears throat> An aspect of this project uh, that will be very important uh, is a focus on orphan data sets and preservation of personal data. Uh, we will use cases of orphan data sets um, and uh, store them on a, on a, a platform uh, in a way similar to uh, the operations of Paradisec. Um, in that uh, the ownership of the data sets would be retained by the data owner or custodian, but would the information about the data set would be discoverable. Um, and that information would be collected for the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Research Data Catalog or the core national Indigenous data assets. So examples of orphan data sets include uh, the files of the National Trachoma and Eye Health Program, the Northern Territory Aboriginal Population Record, the Native Title Records, the Koori Health Research Database, and uh, what are called in the records Native Censuses. Uh, 
Okay, so the governance of this project will be guided by two distinct groups that will obviously talk to each other. The first is the Executive Project Governance Committee, which will include Indigenous Data Network Steering Committee members, representatives from each of the partner organisations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander key stakeholders, and ARDC, HASS, RDC program managers. Um, secondly, there'll be an operational activity stream group. There'll be three of these groups that split off into uh, three distinct working teams, uh, which will be project team leaders, core activity stream staff and representatives from core stream partners.